and this is Ila from Happy Nursing. Today we will discuss about the theory given by Martha Elizabeth Rogers. I hope these videos are useful to you and I am able to make the concepts clear to you. And if it's so then please subscribe my channel, it will really help me. The name of the theory given by Martha Rogers is Science of Unitary Human Beings. She was also born on the day which we celebrate as the International Nurses Day, May 12, 1914. She was an American nurse, researcher, theorist and author. Now why did she call the human beings as unitary? Because unitary means the characteristic related to a unit or units which altogether forms a single or uniform entity. The same thing happens in human beings. See when we look at a human being, we cannot just see him or define him by one of his materialistic character or how he looks outside. For example, a student may be very shy today, but who knows, he may grow into a wonderful influencer tomorrow who will speak in front of many people in future and motivate hundreds and thousands of them. Because human beings change continuously, they don't remain the same and they have many diverse characters in them, which makes them a whole human being. So we cannot see him as a shy guy. He may have other qualities within him which altogether constructs him. She believed that human beings are an integral part of the environment. We all know that nursing is a science and art. This theory also contains two dimensions, science of the nursing and art of the nursing. Science part is the knowledge of nursing that comes from scientific research and the art involves using that knowledge in a creative way which help in improving the lives of the patient. There are five concepts in Rogers nursing theory, energy field, openness, pattern, pan-dimensionality and hemodynamic principles, which again has three characteristics, resonance, helicity and integrality. We will be looking into these concepts one by one. Rogers theory is a bit abstract, but if you learn it by heart, then you will understand its wonderfulness. So our first concept is energy field. She told that there is an energy field in both the living and non-living beings which is constantly on move. It's not stagnant. For example, you may have noticed that sometimes we feel so full of life after visiting a place. That is because the positive energy within us and that place or it may be due to the positive energy of the people whom we met over there. Roger said that we are continuously interacting with our environment. May it be living or non-living. Suppose we entered a cafe, we sat on the sofa, admired the interior, liked the furniture. These are our interactions with the environment. And there is a positive energy in that. That's why it makes us feel good. Now it is constantly changing. Suppose a fight broke out in the cafe or maybe you spotted your enemy there. What happens? Positive energy is changed into negative energy and suddenly we don't feel so good anymore. Our interaction with the environment doesn't give us positive energy anymore. So the main thing to understand here is that there is a continuous interaction in between us and our environment. And there is an energy field in us as well as the environment including living and non-living beings which keeps on changing depending upon how we interact with the environment. Our next concept is openness. We are open to all possibilities. Openness is the characteristic by which we put an impact on others or the environment as well as we ourselves are affected by the people around us or environment around us. For example, if you consider the above situation, I went to a cafe and I liked it there. But suddenly I spotted someone I don't like and it changed my mood. Now that doesn't mean I will be like that the whole day. Maybe I left that place and met another friend on my way back. Now that friend gave me good vibes, positive energy and I again started to feel good. Or maybe the weather outside gave me such good vibes that I started to feel good again. So this is an open system. This aspect is also important in nursing. Suppose you are caring for a patient who is depressed. Your care and your behavior may give him such positive energy that is that his mood would be elevated. That means there is always an open way through which the flow of energy takes place. Our next concept is pattern. Pattern is a versatile character of the energy field within us. See, I already told you previously that we all have an energy field within us. Now our energy field has a pattern which distinguishes one person from the other. For example, some people are straightforward, some are very shy, 
some are very uh, short tempered some are very kind there are different ways human beings can react to a situation that is their pattern and it gives them their identity people recognize us through our patterns like there is a teacher who is very harsh and rude to students if i describe him students can easily understand whom i am talking about even if i don't take his name because it's his identity and then there's another one who is very friendly students like to attend his classes and uh, that is his identity so this is nearly like the essence in essentialism it's not fully same but you can use the example to correlate and understand those who haven't seen my video on essentialism can go and check it out i have added its link in the description box third concept is pan dimensionality pan dimensional means beyond the three dimensions we all have heard 1d 2d 3d right but pan dimensionality means when it goes beyond the all three dimensions means everywhere roger said that the energy field of human beings is pan dimensional it is not limited into a place a room or a country for example just in the previous point i told you about one teacher who is very harsh and rude to the students and the students don't like him let's name him mr suresh now suppose mr suresh is nowhere near he is in another country for some work but suddenly we come to know that his work is being done or postponed or whatever now mr suresh is coming back now he is still sitting in another country he is not in the classroom not in the school not in the city even not in the same country but still students are tensed why because his energy field is not limited to where he is it is everywhere it is pan dimensional so although he is not present here still his energy field is caring the students so that is pan dimensionality now we will talk about hemodynamic principles hemodynamic principles are the principles on which the energy field is dependent now it has three characteristics resonance helicity and integrality now what do we mean by resonance resonance means a vibrating quality of a voice or a sound when the sound vibrates its frequency goes up and down continuously that is changing continuously roger told that our energy field also keeps on changing and how it is changing it is changing following a resonance it is fluctuating all through the day throughout our life according to the science of unitary human beings energy field is the main unit of a human being and it contains all the systems functioning together physiological and psychological the easiest example to understand will be the emotional fluctuations we have throughout our life like the example of the cafe i was happy suddenly i got irritated then i left the cafe and met one of my friend on my way so i was happy again now suppose she asks me where from i was coming then i have to recall the incident which took place in the cafe and again i become angry then i started talking to her about other things which again made me forget the anger so you see the emotions are continuously resonating same way our health our strength our hormones etc keeps on fluctuating and this fluctuations or resonance puts an impact on our energy field next is helicity helicity means unpredictability and non linear movement of the energy fields roger said as we grow older our energy field becomes more complex and diverse it doesn't move in a straight line For example when we were born we knew nothing beyond eating and sleeping as we grow older we learn other things to do when we become adolescent we have a sense of consideration for others feelings but we cannot understand the complex feelings or the complicated things going on around us we often ask questions like seeing a broken marriage we often ask why aren't they staying together what happened because our energy field is simple and one way we only know a few parts of life As we grow older and older we begin to understand the complex processes of life and our energy field also becomes complex nobody can predict what another person is thinking or going through what he will grow into maybe we are doing our daily activities well but actually we don't feel good because of some persons in our environment or because of some situations so we are always surrounded by a negative energy but from outside nobody can predict that so that is helicity the third one is integrality integration means bringing together into one whole unit this means our energy field doesn't constantly remain ours it is spread from person to person 
and covers a number of persons. Like if you recall the example of the angry teacher, you must be remembering that his energy field was such that it scared the students. Now one students inform the other that he is coming back, he also becomes scared. Maybe he was okay before that, laughing out loud. But as soon as he heard the news, the energy field of the first student affected him. And it is a continuous process. It can cover up the whole class. So that is integrality. That was all about Martha Elizabeth Rogers' theory of science of unitary human beings. Friends, I know this theory is a bit complex to understand because most of it is abstract. But if you once understand this, then you will never forget it. I have given a lot into this video. Please subscribe my channel if you find my videos useful.